In materials science, deformation refers to any changes in the shape or size of an object due to an applied force the deformation energy in this case is transferred through work or a change in temperature the deformation energy in this case is transferred through heat the first case can be a result of tensile pulling forces compressive pushing forces shear bending or torsion twisting in the second case the most significant factor which is determined by the temperature is the mobility of the structural defects such as grain boundaries point vacancies line and screw dislocations stacking faults and twins in both crystalline and non-crystalline solids the movement or displacement of such mobile defects is thermally activated and thus limited by the rate of atomic diffusion deformation is often described as strain the concept of deformation is also linked to the study of the stability of an elastic material by using the method of incremental deformations, based on a superposed small deformation on an equilibrium solution. As deformation occurs, internal intermolecular forces arise that oppose the applied force. If the applied force is not too great, these forces may be sufficient to completely resist the applied force and allow the object to assume a new equilibrium state and to return to its original state when the load is removed. A larger applied force may lead to a permanent deformation of the object or even to its structural failure. In the figure it can be seen that the compressive loading indicated by the arrow has caused deformation in the cylinder so that the original shape dashed lines has changed deformed into one with bulging sides. The sides bulge because the material, although strong enough to not crack or otherwise fail, is not strong enough to support the load without change. As a result, the material is forced out laterally. Internal forces in this case at right angles to the deformation resist the applied load. The concept of a rigid body can be applied if the deformation is negligible. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Types of deformation. Depending on the type of material, size and geometry of the object, and the forces applied, various types of deformation may result. The image to the right shows the engineering stress versus strain diagram for a typical ductile material such as steel. Different deformation modes may occur under different conditions, as can be depicted using a deformation mechanism map. Permanent deformation is irreversible, the deformation stays even after removal of the applied forces, while the temporary deformation is recoverable as it disappears after the removal of applied forces. Temporary deformation is also called elastic deformation, while the permanent deformation is called plastic deformation. Topic. Elastic deformation. The study of temporary or elastic deformation in the case of engineering strain is applied to materials used in mechanical and structural engineering, such as concrete and steel, which are subjected to very small deformations. Engineering strain is modeled by infinitesimal strain theory, also called small strain theory, small deformation theory, small displacement theory, or small displacement gradient theory where strains and rotations are both small. For some materials, e.g. elastomers and polymers, subjected to large deformations, the engineering definition of strain is not applicable, e.g. typical engineering strains greater than 1%, thus other more complex definitions of strain are required, such as stretch, logarithmic strain, green strain, and Almansi strain. Elastomers and shape memory metals such as nitinol exhibit large elastic deformation ranges, as does rubber. However, elasticity is non-linear in these materials. Normal metals, ceramics and most crystals show linear elasticity and a smaller elastic range. Linear elastic deformation is governed by Hooke's law, which states sigma equals e epsilon display style sigma equals e for epsilon where sigma display style sigma is the applied stress e display style e is a material constant called young's modulus or elastic modulus and epsilon is the resulting strain 
This relationship only applies in the elastic range and indicates that the slope of the stress versus strain curve can be used to find Young's modulus E display style E Engineers often use this calculation in tensile tests Note that not all elastic materials undergo linear elastic deformation some such as concrete gray cast iron and many polymers respond in a nonlinear fashion for these materials Hooke's law is inapplicable. Topic: <laughs> True stress and strain. Since we disregard the change of area during deformation above, the true stress and strain curve should be re-derived. For deriving the stress strain curve, we can assume that the volume change is zero even if we deformed the materials. We can assume that a I times epsilon I equals A F times epsilon F display style or underscore I times for epsilon underscore I equals or underscore F times for epsilon underscore F then the true stress can be expressed as below Sigma T equals F A F equals F A I times A I A F equals Sigma E times L F L I equals Sigma E times L I plus Delta L L I equals Sigma E one plus Epsilon E Display style sigma underscore t equals f a underscore f equals f a underscore i times or underscore i a underscore f equals sigma underscore e times l underscore f l underscore i equals sigma underscore e times l underscore i plus delta l l underscore i equals sigma underscore e one plus for epsilon underscore e. Additionally, the true strain epsilon t can be expressed as below. Epsilon T equals Delta L L zero plus Delta L L one plus Delta L L two plus equals Sigma Delta L L I Display style the epsilon underscore T equals delta L L underscore zero plus delta L L underscore one plus delta L L underscore two plus C D O T C D O T C D O T equals Sigma delta L L underscore I Then we can express the value as L zero L I D L L D X equals lane L I L zero equals L N one plus Epsilon E Display style int underscore L underscore zero carrot L underscore I DL L DX equals lane L underscore I L underscore zero equals lane one plus for epsilon underscore E. Thus, we can induce the plot in terms of Sigma T Display style Sigma underscore T and Epsilon E 
display style var epsilon underscore e as right figure. Additionally, based on the true stress strain curve, we can estimate the region where necking starts to happen. Since necking starts to appear after ultimate tensile stress where the maximum force applied, we can express this situation as below D F equals zero equals sigma T D A I plus A I D Sigma T Display style DF equals zero equals sigma underscore T dar underscore I plus A underscore I D sigma underscore T So this form can be expressed as below D Sigma T Sigma T equals minus D A I A I display style frac D sigma underscore T sigma underscore T equals frac dar underscore I A underscore I it indicates that the necking starts to appear where reduction of area becomes much significant compared to the stress change then the stress will be localized to specific area where the necking appears Additionally, we can induce various relation based on true stress strain curve. One true strain and stress curve can be expressed by the approximate linear relationship by taking a log on true stress and strain. The relation can be expressed as below Sigma T equals K times Epsilon T N Display style sigma underscore t equals k times var epsilon underscore t caret n, where k display style k is stress coefficient and n display style n is strain hardening coefficient. Usually, the value of n display style n has range around 0.02 to 0.5 at room temperature. If n display style n is 1, we can express this material as perfect elastic material point 2. In reality, stress is also highly dependent on the rate of strain variation. Thus, we can induce the empirical equation based on the strain rate variation sigma t equals k times epsilon t m display style sigma underscore t equals k times dot the epsilon underscore t caret m where k display style k is constant related to the material flow stress epsilon t Display style dot var epsilon underscore t indicates the derivative of strain by the time, which is also known as strain rate. M display style m is the strain rate sensitivity. Moreover, value of m display style m is related to the resistance toward the necking. Usually, the value of m display style m is at the range of 0 to 0 0.1 at room temperature and as high as 0 0.8 when the temperature is increased. By combining the 1 and 2, we can create the ultimate relation as below. Sigma T equals K times Epsilon T N Epsilon T M Display style sigma underscore t equals k times var epsilon underscore t caret n dot var epsilon underscore t caret m, where k display style k is the global constant for relating strain, strain rate, and stress. 
3. Based on the true stress strain curve and its derivative form, we can estimate the strain necessary to start necking. This can be calculated based on the intersection between true stress strain curve as shown in right. This figure also shows the dependency of the necking strain at different temperature. In case of FCC metals, both of the stress strain curve at its derivative are highly dependent on temperature. Therefore, at higher temperature, necking starts to appear even under lower strain value. All of these properties indicate the importance of calculating the true stress strain curve for further analyzing the behavior of materials in sudden environment. 4. A graphical method, so called consider construction, can help determine the behavior of stress strain curve whether necking or drawing happens on the sample. By setting Lambda equals L L zero display style lambda equals L L underscore zero as determinant, the true stress and strain can be expressed with engineering stress and strain as below. Sigma T equals Sigma E times Lambda Epsilon T equals L N Lambda Display style sigma underscore T equals sigma underscore E times Lambda Verepsilon underscore T equals lane Lambda Therefore, the value of engineering stress can be expressed by the secant line from made by true stress and Lambda Display style Lambda Value where lambda equals zero display style lambda equals zero to lambda equals one display style lambda equals one by analyzing the shape of sigma t minus lambda display style sigma underscore t lambda diagram and secant line, we can determine whether the materials show drawing or necking. On the figure, a, there is only concave upward consider plot. It indicates that there is no yield drop so the material will be suffered from fracture before it yields. On the figure, b, there is specific point where the tangent matches with secant line at point where lambda equals lambda y Display style lambda equals lambda underscore y. After this value, the slope becomes smaller than the secant line where necking starts to appear. On the figure C, there is point where yielding starts to appear, but when lambda equals lambda d display style lambda equals lambda underscore d, the drawing happens. After drawing, all the material will stretch and eventually show fracture. Between lambda y display style lambda underscore y and lambda d display style lambda underscore d, the material itself does not stretch, but rather only the neck starts to stretch out. Topic. Plastic deformation This type of deformation is not undone simply by removing the applied force. An object in the plastic deformation range, however, will first have undergone elastic deformation, which is undone simply by removing the applied force, so the object will return partway to its original shape. Soft thermoplastics have a rather large plastic deformation range as do ductile metals such as copper, silver, and gold. Steel does, too, but not cast iron. Hard thermosetting plastics, rubber, crystals, and ceramics have minimal plastic deformation ranges. An example of a material with a large plastic deformation range is wet chewing gum, which can be stretched dozens of times its original length. Under tensile stress, plastic deformation is characterized by a strain hardening region and a necking region and finally, fracture also called rupture. 
During strain hardening the material becomes stronger through the movement of atomic dislocations. The necking phase is indicated by a reduction in cross-sectional area of the specimen. Necking begins after the ultimate strength is reached. During necking, the material can no longer withstand the maximum stress and the strain in the specimen rapidly increases. Plastic deformation ends with the fracture of the material. Topic: <laughs> Metal fatigue Another deformation mechanism is metal fatigue, which occurs primarily in ductile metals. It was originally thought that a material deformed only within the elastic range returned completely to its original state once the forces were removed. However, faults are introduced at the molecular level with each deformation. After many deformations, cracks will begin to appear, followed soon after by a fracture, with no apparent plastic deformation in between. Depending on the material, shape, and how close to the elastic limit it is deformed, failure may require thousands, millions, billions, or trillions of deformations. Metal fatigue has been a major cause of aircraft failure, especially before the process was well understood see, for example, the de Havilland comet accidents. There are two ways to determine when a part is in danger of metal fatigue, either predict when failure will occur due to the material, force, shape, iteration combination, and replace the vulnerable materials before this occurs, or perform inspections to detect the microscopic cracks and perform replacement once they occur. Selection of materials not likely to suffer from metal fatigue during the life of the product is the best solution, but not always possible. Avoiding shapes with sharp corners limits metal fatigue by reducing stress concentrations, but does not eliminate it. Analysis of the bulging factor of pressurized parts of the plane can assist in evaluating the damage tolerance of airframe fuselages. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Compressive failure. Usually, compressive stress applied to bars, columns, etc. leads to shortening. Loading a structural element or specimen will increase the compressive stress until it reaches its compressive strength. According to the properties of the material, failure modes are yielding for materials with ductile behavior most metals, some soils and plastics or rupturing for brittle behavior geomaterials, cast iron, glass, etc. In long, slender structural elements, such as columns or truss bars, an increase of compressive force F leads to structural failure due to buckling at lower stress than the compressive strength. Topic. Fracture This type of deformation is also irreversible. A break occurs after the material has reached the end of the elastic, and then plastic, deformation ranges. At this point forces accumulate until they are sufficient to cause a fracture. All materials will eventually fracture, if sufficient forces are applied. <laughs> <laughs> Misconceptions A popular misconception is that all materials that bend are weak, and those that don't are strong. In reality, many materials that undergo large elastic and plastic deformations, such as steel, are able to absorb stresses that would cause brittle materials, such as glass, with minimal plastic deformation ranges, to break. <laughs> See also